So back before digital, they used to shoot on these sort of film reels. So these would be in the camera and they would shoot and the footage would be printed on these reels. But the problem is that when it came to editing these reels, the lines could be visible or will be visible. And so the editors would put in another lot of footage overlapping the original footage so that the lines were no longer visible. And that is what B-roll came from. Nowadays with digital cameras, B-roll is more or less the same thing. It covers the A-roll, but obviously we aren't covering lines because we don't have lines anymore. So instead B-roll basically just covers the A-roll, which is this. So this frame here is A-roll. And if I was to put a picture up to cover me, that is now B-roll. So when would you use B-roll? There are a few various ways to use it and when. So the first one would be if you are overlaying some information. So for example, for my boss's videos, Mark, he talks a lot about money making and property investment and everything. So he talks about updates in the property market. And in that case, I would then overlay some graphs and some images to do with the property market or whatever it is he is talking about. So showing the information on the screen for the viewer. You can also use B-roll in a vlog style, which a lot of the time it is used. So say for example, in one of my past vlogs on my vlog channel, I have gone on a photography trip with one of my friends. When we, when we reach Edinburgh tomorrow, right? Mm. You know what I'm going to say? Dude, guess where we are in? We're in Edinburgh. So during those vlogs, I would then pop up on the screen the pictures that we took. As well as this, in vlog form and also in filmmaking, they use B-roll to transition to different locations. So in films, if they're going from a house to an exterior location or to a different location completely elsewhere within the scene, they would use some B-roll of either people walking or a car driving or whatever it may be to transition that shot and you can use it in vlogs as well so if i was to say i'm going from this office and i'm going to go to the gym rather than cutting from here to the gym i can make it a bit more entertaining by adding some b-roll footage of me packing up the office getting in the car and driving over to the gym you can also use b-roll just as a montage sequence to so say you are making something or if i wanted to set up the studio for example i could just show a montage slow motion or not slow motion of me doing that. If you're visiting a friend who makes hats, you could sh do some B-roll showing the studio that he is in, some of the equipment and some little bits of montage sequence of him actually making a hat before then cut into your conversation with the person. Also, if you've ever watched reviews of say a phone or a laptop or something and you've seen they've got like that top down view, that is also B-roll because it's not on the actor, it's showing the product on the table. And so like my, when I spoke about the five camera settings and it cut to the camera whilst I was talking, that cut into the camera, that second angle is B-roll. Basically the whole point of it is just to make the video a little bit more entertaining rather than having none of it at all, which can get a little bit boring. So some of you may be asking, how do I shoot B-roll? There are a few ways. Uh, one of them would be if you have access to a decent camera, shoot it in slow motion. It's quite simple, just whatever it is that you're doing, whatever montage sequence, if you're going from one place to another, whatever it may be, set it to slow motion, record some of the movements, sorted, you've got your B-roll. If you don't have access to a camera that's got slow motion, then you can use your phone. iPhones or not iPhones, a lot of the time have a slow motion option that you can use. If for whatever reason you don't like slow motion or you literally don't even have a phone that has the access to slow motion, then you don't need it. What you can do in this case is if you have the money for a gimbal, I use the DJI Ronin SC. You can use the gimbal to get the slow movement shots without having it to actually be slow motion. Just you, the camera operator, is just moving slowly instead. Or you can do what one of my favorite directors does in his films, Edgar Wright. He just does quick cuts. So if you've ever watched Hot Fuzz, a lot of times he will do quick cuts with the sound effects, the whooshes and all that sort of stuff. And that can also be a good way of using B-roll as well. Here is an example of that for me shutting down the studio. And you can see how it can be quite entertaining. So I showed every step of shutting down the lights, putting the camera in a bag and everything. And that quickly cut can be a good entertaining way of showing B-roll without the whole slow motion cinematic stuff. I would recommend possibly using both. If you've got a long enough vlog, a long enough video, you can use a mix of slow motion and the quick cuts, or you can do one or the other. It depends on what your personal preference is as the video creator. The final way that you can shoot B-roll is stock footage. 
If you don't have access to a drone or a gimbal or a slow motion camera, you can use stock footage. If in your vlog you're saying you're going running in the woods and you, you're leaving your house, get into the woods and you want to go for a run, you can download stock footage for free or by paying for a subscription to a website like Artlist where they've got high quality 4K or HD stock footage. They've got drone shots, they've got slow motion, they've got whatever you want to use. You can use that stock footage in your videos. Obviously, if you use the website and you pay for a subscription, then it's licensed to you, so you don't have to worry about copyright issues. But that's a way around getting some B-roll without having to worry about needing the equipment or spending hundreds of pounds or even thousands of pounds on buying the equipment to get it yourself. So a few notes I wanna leave you on, and that is if you are doing B-roll, don't overdo it. There is such thing as overdoing it. Don't have B-roll every 10, 13, 30 seconds in your video. Don't talk for a bit, then B-roll. Talk for a bit more, B-roll. Talk for a bit more, B-roll. It can get repetitive and you have to appeal to the audience. Now, annoyingly, humans are annoying. Our attention span sucks, which is why short form is doing so well. But at the same time, if you have too much of the same thing and it's repetition, then people will also get bored of that. Sometimes they want to see you talk and sometimes they're bored of you talking. So you have to find that fine line, experiment a little bit and find what works for your audience. Second thing is whenever you do do B-roll, don't make that last too long either. Don't have a one to two minute video of just music of you doing stuff without any sort of audio other than the music because that can also get boring because it's too long. Don't show too much all the time. If you're showing B-roll with you getting out of bed in the morning, you don't have to show you getting out of the covers, getting your trousers on, putting your shirt on, buttoning up the shirt, getting some socks on, going to the bathroom, cleaning your teeth. You don't have to show the seven steps. Instead of those seven, you can show you waking up by turning off the alarm, opening the wardrobe, and then bathroom. Cut down the seven to three. Our brains are very good with filling in the blanks. But yeah, B-roll. How many times did I say B-roll in that video? God knows.